my literally like my breakthrough crook came the moment i literally left all signals groups and ignored all the courses and stuff i had i don't like, uh, like talking <laughs> cr crap about certain people and stuff but yes it was garbage the rest was stop loss stop loss played out for break even trade it was useless are you more basic in trading or do you go more the smc ICT Ooh, route? okay Hey guys, welcome back to another 2Gs and Co podcast with myself and my co-host Keegan van Dijk. What's up, what's up Chad? And we've got a very special guest here today. We traveled all the way to Cape Town, Garen Hull in the house. Garen, very welcome. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we, we already had Garen on as a guest on stream, but uh, we said we wanted to do a, a full on podcast with Garen. Um, and I think we're going to kick it off right away. Garen, how's it going? It's good. Busy, but um, it's at least a good type of busy, so can't really complain about it. Kicks, when did we have Garen on? Was it last year? Yeah, last, last year, year you, you yeah. were, I think, one of the first guys we had on as well for yeah, like the, the live yeah. the live stream guest. It's like the third, or second or third person, I think. Yeah. Wasn't it like I was like at the end of the year somewhere? Yeah. So, somewhere yeah. at the end, yeah. Mm. Garen, uh, firstly, some guys wasn't on that episode, so I think mm. just uh, to introduce yourself, give us a little bit of a background as to yourself and uh, we're going to start it off right there. Okay, I'm going to try and keep it as short as possible because there's quite a lot to it. But um, yeah, I was uh, obviously I'm 25 years old, turning 26 in two days. <laughs> so I was born in uh, Kimberley, Northern Cape, lived in a very small town, um, moved to Nisna when I was uh, seven. I lived in Nisna for around also five years, moved to Sirius spent probably most of my life there and uh i was always massive on sports so since i was a kid i wanted to be a professional like sportsman you know cricket uh started playing hockey later on as well rugby um golf and uh yeah high school came a lot happened and i ended up trying to go the the pro golfer route so I went to, after high school, went to a PJ Golf Academy and uh, I actually flip and enjoyed it quite a lot, but yes, it's hectic training. So it's like seven in the morning till five, six o'clock in the afternoon, gym every single day, on course, at the driving range, weekends is tournaments. So it's like nonstop. Mm. You're just busy the whole time, traveling, playing, practicing the whole time. So you don't really have like any social life. And to me, I love playing games, so <laughs> I'm a gamer. And, you know, I thought about it. There was some um, stages where I'm like, yeah, I really want to do this. But at the same time, I also didn't know if this is the type of life I want to live forever. Because yeah. I want to be free. I always felt like I want to be free. I want to do whatever I want, whenever I want. And if I want to, you know, just travel here, go here, like I can't do it. I'm not necessarily talking about like traveling and the luxurious and all that. I'm mm. talking about just freedom and enjoying myself with friends, family. If they might not have the finances, I can, you know, sort it out. It's yeah. not a big deal. And uh, obviously cars, I flip and love cars. So that's probably one of the main reasons I want to have a lot of money <laughs> is cars. Cars is expensive parts. And unfortunately, I have a very expensive taste in clothing and yeah, you just chose all the like worst hobbies right yeah. now. <laughs> I don't know why I was born like this, man. Honestly, sometimes I get angry at myself, but uh, it is what it is. So I had to find a way of obviously doing so. But I did have a drop shipping, you know, business that I started in Matric. I didn't do well in the beginning, to be honest. I think it was more around when I was first year, I started like making a few thousand and, you know, saved up a little bit and so on. But at the same time, my coach, he, he, was, he was a professional. He played on tour and everything. So he saw that my focus wasn't with golf. with golf. And yeah, I mean, it's like I said, it's super intense. So they take stuff very seriously. So I had to make a decision. So I actually sold my shop to a friend of mine that did this full time. So I sold it back to him and he can do whatever he wants with it. And 
yeah, after that, it was just golf, golf, golf. And in my final year, I was the third year, I had a back injury. It was literally a day before a SA tournament. It was in Neisner. Um, I tore my lower back muscles. So I was out for six months, more or less, they said. And then it depends on the rear, but they said more or less two months. So that happened around April. Mm. So my year's finished, like it's yeah. done, which obviously upset me because that was my best like results that year. I started off with like big tournaments, top 10 finishes, top fives, a few. I, I felt like things was finally clicking. And yeah, so at that time I was introduced to trading. I think I, was, I got introduced to trading around end of 2018 by Festex, Clint <laughs> Fester. <laughs> Because I've never, I think I've never heard of her. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of her. But so it yeah. was, uh, yeah, it was, uh, I remember he drove by there by Tiger Valley um, a couple of times. He had like a GTI back then, a club sport. So I was like, oh, you know, I was into cars and all that. So I saw him the one day, asked him a question like, yo, what is this? How do you make money? Because I see the stickers on the car and, you know, whatever. And yeah, and I saw his trading and he had a course and all that. I didn't have the money for the course, so. I just said, oh, okay, cool, I'll go do my own research. Yeah. So did my own research. And yes, yeah, I was overwhelmed, to be honest. But the thing is, I feel like, you know, looking or go Googling now or YouTubing for trading stuff, there is millions of stuff. Yeah, you content. can almost find anything yeah. on yeah. the internet now. I feel like back then, like, it wasn't like that. Um, I couldn't really find something that was just clear i felt like mm. it was so i think i think back then everything was uh, a little dispersed yeah like n nobody put something together to say like yes chapter one mm. to chapter 10 it exactly it was like yeah. little bits and pieces yeah and especially as a newbie you don't know how to connect the dots like where does this come in so yes i feel it's it's become a lot more constructive mm. in the sense of these guys putting out um a lot more clear content yeah. in terms yeah. for you to follow as a newbie definitely so it's good you know obviously for newbies are trying to get into it now than back then but yeah uh, i remember i had a friend um, a friend of mine he actually wanted to get into it as well it's also like a hustler you know want to make some money and stuff and we both said he came to my place because i had an apartment here in tiger valley waterfront and he used to come over to me, sleep over, and then we do research together and, you know, help each other out and whatever. And fast forward, you know, back to my injury now, that's when I just kind of sat down and just spent my whole day just doing research. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, a lot of people said, yeah, you should start on demo and try it out and this, that. I immediately started live trading just because I felt like demo, or to me, it just made sense from the start that, is a waste of my time actually because trading it's supposed to be emotional because it's like it's money that you yeah, are yeah, losing and 100%. making at the same time so i wanted to actually get the the real feel of what it's supposed to feel like and yeah i started off i remember i went to a, a course here in in the in town i don't know if i want to say the name of the person <laughs> but it's a really famous trader in south africa uh so, so it's Joe no. Book. So it's, it's no. Jason Noah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the okay. fact that this guy has come up on so many guys lately. <laughs> yeah, it's a, I went to his uh, thing. I can't remember if he was there himself. I don't think so. It was his mates that helped him at that time. Yeah. And I went there, it was a two day thing. I went the first day. Yes, see, I they just taught me what I got from the internet, the trend lines, board resistance. I was like, well, I thought I was gonna learn something more advanced and I can actually mm. use. I didn't even go the second day. <laughs> I remember my mom still sponsored me the money. I didn't have it. And I still the I'm going to be honest. I didn't go there the next day because it's useless. Yeah, it's useless. <laughs> like baby pup stuff. Yeah, it's literally. That's before I actually came across baby pups. And baby pups had a lot more yeah. better <laughs> content. More, more, more yeah. helpful. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I think from the beginning, the biggest thing for me was what time frame. I always struggle with the time frame. I don't know if I should trade this time frame or this. Like it didn't make sense. But later on, obviously, I kind of gathered all the pieces, bits and bobs. But I used to like uh, add a journal. Yes, see, I I already have like I, th I think I'm on my third journal since 2019. 
which is a lot because I hate writing and right. reading. So <laughs> for me, it's a lot. But it's, it's only because you know certain things I only remember if I write it down or s you know physically yeah, see it. You need to see it in front of you. Exactly. So did that and you know, I didn't make any withdrawals for the whole year. I think since 2018, like November, I started trading till October or August 2019. That's when I made my first ever withdrawal. And I remember it was a uh, JP Markets withdrawal. 500 rand and a 750 at the end of the week so for me that was like insane yeah because you know at that time i got you know student like money from my parents but that's for like petrol food and the basics so mm -hmm. if i wanted spare chains i had to cut some stuff like short a little bit <laughs> so either i'm going out to the boys for being a burger or a movie or uh eating trading. hot dogs for the rest of the well, month funding <laughs> <laughs> but i funded most of it to be honest um every now and then i used to save up just for like a game but most of it i funded lost it funded lost it every month and then um withdrawal started but when the with withdrawal started i feel like everything shifted but i think it's only because it was like such a mental thing for me i finally got it now so mm. now from it becomes yeah, real yeah so yeah from there it grew quite quickly till December I started making like two or three thousand a week, which was pretty lacquer for me to be honest. I flip and I was driving and then yeah, beginning twenty twenty. The end of twenty nineteen, beginning twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty overall was like the weirdest roller coaster year of my whole life. I feel like everything fell apart at that time. Uh so my my parents got divorced, but it's something I never saw coming, or like any of us to be mm, honest. Yeah. Because we were like really a super close family, family time together, you know, playing cricket with my dad, rugby, you know, everything do mm -hmm. together. You listen to music, cars, everything was just good. And all of a sudden, just disappeared. You know, L didn't see it coming at all. A lot of disappointment, f uh, for sure. But at the same time, my mom moved to Grayton, and I finished studying obviously. So I moved back to her beginning 2020 so i can look after her because on her birthday the 5th of jan she let me and my sister know that she was diagnosed with stage 3 breast cancer so now i'm like okay well what else can go wrong you yeah, know like everything is like everything everything is, is basically going south so at that time with my trading i felt like i have nothing to lose like nothing to lose i can just go max out everything yeah. because you know at that time, I was just like, oh, I don't care. I'm, I'm done. I don't care anyways. So I looked after her shop, you know, for like two months or three months, just so that, uh, yeah, obviously her treatment every week, Thursday. And then I used to take her, I had to take her from Grayton to Somerset West every week. Uh, and then luckily she found someone that can look after the shop because she saw <laughs> what it was doing to me mentally because I hated you know, working at my parents' shop when I was smaller, like, yeah, mm. for pocket money and stuff like that. But what shop is it? They always had a supermarket, so uh, they okay, used to have, like, an okay, 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 okay. Uh, value or okay, um, okay. grocer. Uh, except in Nice now, they had a liquor store, but, okay. yeah, we didn't do too well. That's why we moved to Sierra, start fresh again and okay. build everything up. But I ate it. It just... It wasn't for me. I can't sit in like a building or something all day long. I just uh, yeah. it's just not me. Like if I can choose to do something else, I will do it. But um yeah, look after that. She got someone to look after the shop. And then I just traded every single day. Like make food, trade. Literally from I'm not joking, I used to wake up at like six, seven by myself, like no alarm, nothing. Mm -hmm. Um and up until 10 o'clock at night and it obviously slows down it's dead and then i just play games with mates and wait for agent to open and then i go to sleep at around two and then wake up at seven like every single day for at least like six months because i felt like that's all i had and uh, that's the second week of january i did another course it was a daniel savage's course oh <laughs> oh yeah oh so i did all these oh. gurus courses man i did most of it sure stop plus savage yeah sure. i must be honest okay there was one thing out of his course that i kind of needed and that changed something for me one thing the rest was uh, yeah, yeah you know you know the thing but one thing stuck to me and i was like okay cool i'm gonna actually try this with what i'm doing 
I was playing around a little bit, but I found also EMA that kind of made it better than what it was supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And uh, Sorry, Garen, be, before we go on, yeah. um, I, ju- I just want to touch on this. So, obviously, you you bought some courses or attended some courses from, from these, these mentors. And, and especially for new people watching this, what attracted you to go and buy, for instance, Clint Fester's course or Daniel Savage? Uh, because I think that is something we've talked about a little bit, but especially during that time, you, you're somebody looking for knowledge, but what, what made you go and buy specifically from those people? So, obviously, 100% the materialistic things. Okay. And at that time, you just mm-hmm. think, or oh, me personally, I only thought the only way to make money is you know, trading. Yeah, I did obviously take in con- into consideration they sell courses, but I didn't know you can make that much selling courses. Uh, so that so the lifestyle is the one lifestyle. Of, uh, okay. I mean, perfect. I would just say, I would just yeah. say to you guys. If you have two people stand there and they both tell me they're traders, one's driving a city golf. And one's driving a Ferrari. Yeah. Who's the guy you're going to take financial advice from? Yeah, exactly. It does obviously help from a marketing perspective. Yeah. Definitely. But it's not always, uh, obviously, after doing it, I uh, thought, you know, came to a conclusion yeah. it's not. Do, do, you, do you guys think that that era of lifestyle marketing is coming to an end? Mm-mm. Funny enough, I don't. No, really? no, I don't think so. But I, th- I feel like at the moment there's a lot more people kind of standing up towards it and addressing it. And it looks like most of the people are starting to actually take damage. You know, the yeah. the marketers, you know, social media marketer, trader, lifestyle, they're getting actually targeted and taken out. In my I, opinion. I, feel, I feel almost like um, traders are becoming more educated mm. and a lot more, let's call it sophisticated, yeah. in that they know now what a mentor should be what a mentor should look like and yeah. if i'm buying a course this is the minimum expectation i i, I don't want to say one hour video and you're selling that for 500 dollars. Yeah. yeah like i want something outlined with what do i need to go through how do i execute on that and where's my follow-up in terms of can i get a, a one-on-one call with you yeah do you do group calls so i think the standard has been set to a level where either if you're not operating on that level people are not going to pay the money for no, that never or people are rather going to go to free resources mm, yes. on the internet yeah i feel like you have to offer just proper education even if it's like in my opinion that's kind of the route i wanted to take simply because after everything i saw you know all these people are selling the exact same thing it's a course and it's a signals group there's nothing like personal like i can't yeah. ask the mentor like yeah. hello uh, i'm struggling with this can you just you know help me on this thing yeah this and topic or yeah whatever. and it's, it's because they're pushing me. numbers yeah it's, exactly it's numbers it, the, the thing is you 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 can't do that if Mm-mm. you've got two thousand people on your group no, it's physically no impossible mm. so my thing always was if you do a mentorship rather make it more expensive take less, less. people on and do actual mentorship yeah. not just sell a course and there the guy goes about his business. Yeah, because it's kind of useless, I would say, to 95% yeah. of the people buying it. You, you get the five that just goes crazy and takes a crazy amount of time to actually just figure it out. Like it's a puzzle, basically. But I mean, like, yeah. what, the, what is the other 95% getting? They're getting nothing. Because my, my they're getting all this info, but most of the time they don't really understand or know how to implement it yeah. at all. And that's where you need to, like, have someone to talk to and ask the questions directly. So, so this is where I'm thinking, like, do you think in the future we're going to see a change in this industry where you're still going to have your mentors, but it's, I think we're going to have an approach where guys are happy to pay, but they want something similar to almost like a, a personal trainer. Yeah, the, mm, you, I don't. Want, I don't want to book you, but I will pay an even the same amount, and I'll pay it as a monthly fee. But yeah. I get that access to you almost every single day or every second day. We do check-ins, yes. we fix the problems every week. You kind of doing a rundown of the client of whatever the case is, mm. see where they're going wrong, where they're improving, adjust where you need to adjust. It's not going to be this case anymore. Of I buy a course. 
I look at, I read through it and I never hear from you again. Yeah. Whether it helped me or not, it, it doesn't benefit yeah. me. I, I think that the issue comes in when you do strategy hopping and, and we've all been there. You yeah. see somebody on social media and all of a sudden you see gold move, a $100 move, he caught it, you didn't catch it. Mm. And now all of a sudden it's like, what does this guy know? that I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And then immediately it's that thing of flip. This guy knows something that could be valuable. And then at the end of the day, when you go into his group or you go into what he does, it's like this guy actually doesn't know shit. Mm. Like, mm. let's be honest. Yeah. Here. That that was the thing for me years ago, for instance, with Roger Banks. Uh, uh, and I thought like, flip, what is this guy is doing pretty well for himself. And paid the $500 and went in there and I'm like, this guy is literally selling a breakout strategy. Mm. <laughs> something <laughs> you, stupid. something yeah. simple. Yeah. There's, there's maybe like three elements to it. Doesn't work well. He loses continuously on his streams. Yeah. Very good marketer. <laughs> and then you realize I didn't miss anything. I mm. just wasted $500 that I could have spent at the casino. But it, it really is. There's night. so many basic things. And again, it's almost like the guys are literally packaging something you can find on baby pips yeah. and rephrasing it. Yeah. Exactly. And that's all they're doing. My literally, like my breakthrough came the moment I literally left all signals groups and ignored all the courses and stuff I had. It was in 2020. I complete. I literally, I remember that day. I left everything. It's stuff I still paid for. I was on Lambo Rahul's Signals Group as well. I yeah, paid out of that go. Yes, it's absolute <laughs> garbage, <laughs> honestly. Like, I'm not even going to... I don't okay. like talking cr <laughs> crap about certain people and stuff, but yes, it was garbage. Send a signal. No, stop plus it. Okay, try again. Send a signal again. Same trade. Stop, stop plus it. Three or four times, and then one player's out. Okay, now he's like, oh, cool, we just made our money back, but the thing only ran a one, two, three. And we already lost four. So you're still negative, actually, yeah, if negative you think about it. Yeah. And then I would say like, you know, in the whole month, there was one or two trades that had like a one to five that played out. The rest was stop loss, stop loss, played out for break even trade. It was useless. Like but but the we, we, I think we talked about it. Uh, traders love quantity. Like yeah. They, they I don't want, understand why. They like, want three, four it. signals a day. Mm. Like um, That's the first yeah. thing people ask you ever. How many, How signals? many signals do you send? And yeah. Like, yes, see. So, so my thing is most people don't trade full time. Mm. So firstly, that guy, he's got a nine to five. Now he still wants three signals. So he's not going to be effective at his nine to five <laughs> yeah. because he's going to be constantly You sit on that phone waiting for exactly. the signal. So I don't know why. And... I think we talked about it. FTMO released a stat showing that that positive correlation between oh, less, less trades, trades traders uh, being more profitable, yeah. and then also holding times. The traders that held trades for longer were also more profitable. profitable. So again, it's that thing of that me and Keegan always talks about is like less exposure to the market is less risk. Yeah. Mm. The only way that you cannot lose money in the market is if you do not take a trade. Exactly. That's the I always say yeah. that to, you know, like my members as well. You can't lose money if you're not trading. So yes. make sure when you take a trade, you have the highest probability of that thing actually playing out. And then when it plays out, that's something I kind of actually started focusing on most recently is try and maximize your wins yeah. as much yeah. as possible. Like stop loss trail or just let it go. Like, I feel like when you win, you are just trying to make it as big as possible. But that's, that's, that's something I've always said to guys. Guys are always hanging on to the losses. They kill yeah. the losses so late. Yeah. But then they're the also killing the winners short, yeah. cut short. Yes. And they don't let the winners run. And but I always sit there and these guys, I think I even had the conversation with Mo the one day and I said to him, bro, this is a trade. Let this thing run. Like, this is going to be a four, five hour trade for you. Yeah. And the minute the guys see... They already up 15 pips and they see one two pip red candle. Oh, yeah, I'm the trade. Out. I'm out. Yeah. And, then, and then it carries on. I'm like, bro, yeah. but there wasn't a reason. There was no reason for you to close you, the trade. You know where um, Tom Hogard, uh, credit to Tom Hogard for best loser wins. He actually talks about that. And it's a psychological effect that you've got. So you're sitting through the drawdown. And immediately your mind tells you, like, this is uncomfortable. I want to mm. get out of this situation. And 
you sit through the drawdown and then as soon as you get into a little bit of profit you just want to get rid of that feeling of that anxiety mm. that stress you went through like oh it almost hit stop loss it didn't hit stop loss so you just feel it's, it's your mind telling you get out of that situation that fight yeah. or flight and then the other thing is that that opium we always talk about where you run on hope where yeah. it's like i would say opium and ego because you don't want to accept that you're on the wrong side of the market yeah, it's true, physically yeah. your ego blocking you from killing that trade and you constantly sit there and it's like flip i'm hoping i'm hoping i'm hoping hoping Boom. it turns around yeah and you get clapped mm. yeah. so i think i think a perfect example of this and this is actually something we can actually talk about which falls in line with your story is if i'm correct it is your biggest trade that you you ever had the trade that bought you that baby that's downstairs yeah now if i remember the story correctly like you even still said like you you made this massive win because you fell asleep yeah if, if you weren't oh, yeah. sleeping yeah. you would have cut the trade <laughs> that early. was i think that's like my biggest percentage gain on a single trade yeah that was um i think it, that was actually the weekend where they kind of officially declared the pandemic as a you know as a world oh, yeah, pandemic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like officially i think it was like on a friday night i had a you i think i had like a 40k account i was just playing around a bit and i took it like to 70 80 the markets were like insanely volatile i've never seen it like that ever again and uh, i lost it back to like well the photo is like eleven thousand nine hundred and something and i left it there i was like okay well to my knowledge this thing you know should fall over the weekend but i'm just gonna you know enter some entries just two minutes before the market closes because sure. i'll blow the account Ballsy. that's how crazy Ballsy. it moves <laughs> yeah and i remember i also wanted to make sure i actually get an entry not the market just yeah. closing, yeah, closing. Yeah. and uh, i enter a few enter a few like light risk not full yet and uh, i think it was like took a chance like 10 seconds before i just tapped a few more entries and I saw the market close and I'm like, oh, thank you. I'm in. Let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thank you. I, I literally was waiting. So back then I was like on a group chat as well with um, Mr. Festix and <laughs> Darren Dix and his brother Bevan and a few other guys as well. And uh, I remember I was couldn't sleep that week and I was flipping excited. And uh, Sunday night, I remember it was seven minutes before market open. I fell asleep. <laughs> I, I don't know how i could i don't know how to be honest i fell asleep and i woke up your it's that type of wake up where your heart is like racing like, oh, I'm like what, what, what just happened yeah what happened and i'm looking at the time it's seven minutes past market opened and i see that group chat's going like crazy money 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 i'm like oh flip imagine like my the first thing in my head was like blue how screens, big is it blue screen and hopefully didn't retrace yeah <laughs> so <laughs> i open up the the thing is still refreshing it shows like something minus six or minus seven and then boom it showed 278 278 000. and my brain was like oh, how so much <laughs> like how is it so much it doesn't yeah. make sense like and um apparently did you did you lock in there or not no i, I closed it there yeah. oh, okay. i just closed out Flip my brain was like <laughs> I, I, no, no, you uh, lock in you and uh, right. the funny thing is if i was awake at market open i would have closed on 68k because in that seven minutes it just dumped like crazy dump. Open. yeah and uh it was flipping insane but later that day was the first time they closed us 30 in the middle of the day they shut yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's called uh, a circuit breaker so i think once the market and and don't quote me on this, but I think it's seven percent. If the market declines more than five, between five to seven percent, they start to halt trading. Uh, so almost like to stop the bleed, yes. that panic selling. So yes. um, circuit breakers got it. I still remember that. That's day. insane. Like uh, same with oil, oil as well. Garen, ju I, I just want to bring it back quickly uh, to the golfing. So obviously you were in a PGA Academy um, chasing after that pro card. Yeah do you think if that back injury didn't happen do you think there would be a chance that you would be say on the sunshine tour or potentially trying to get onto the corn ferry tour definitely in the u.s 100 yeah do definitely. you think do you think uh you you had the ability and the skill honestly yeah i've been told by a lot of people 
I'm wasting my talent because I have like just a natural talent for it. But there's a, there's a guy I know, um, like my sister's boyfriend, Stian. He's so <laughs> he always try and get me to go play with him every time he plays. Like yo, bro. There's a there's a guy <laughs> I know that he was. I think he's around our age. He was also from PE. Uh, his name's Carl. Carl. I don't know what his name is now, but he's like doing amazing. That's what I was going to say. Like, I don't know if you knew him because you almost like it's that thing of yeah. if I, I was playing against this guy yeah, and yeah. I was definitely him and now he's on like event. the pro leagues, like killing it. Is it, is it too late now? Let's say, for instance, you just saw it today, you're obviously turning mm. 26 in two days. Yeah. Do you think it's too late now? No, definitely not. not. Uh, the average age a player turns pro actually is like mid 30s weirdly oh enough. really yeah that's the average uh, age but uh, you know obviously as youngsters everybody wants to achieve mm -hmm. it at 20 21 24. Do, do you ever feel like you you want to revisit that potentially like maybe say give it another good shot for two or three years or is it completely off the table to me it depends if i reach a very like specific uh, goal in f in the financial side of my life like where i'm just i don't really have to work at all mm. type of thing i'll definitely give it a go because then i don't need there's to you no know, grind pressure, and, yeah. yeah there's no pressure or anything but if not then i'm not really bothered by it because i must be honest like i saw my back injury as like a sign a sign like yeah. this is your your I mean, way i mean i also at the same time i want to bring it up because obviously you have your community yeah uh, the daily scalp and from what i've seen and all that i mean you you live for that community mm, that's I like it, your yeah. family you love it so it's always i say to people it's funny enough when you have these these main things in your life the same way i had rugby like you have these things that you think it's like your world mm. but when they that kind of that door closes they really always is mm. that next door that opens yeah it's true i must be honest like when it happened i was flipping heartbroken because that's when i finally started to get excited because i was like well the the pro yeah. thing is like yeah, close yeah. now i was like on the Locking edge on of the door, yeah, yeah mm. basically of getting onto the sunshine tour or playing Q school or stuff like that. But yeah, I've th that's the, the weird thing. The moment it happened, like I feel like my success felt quick. If you, it was a year after, and I th it was on the, my, the on my birthday, the twenty seventh of March, twenty twenty. I made my first million. Like my wallet was uh, balance was on a million. Uh, that night and it was also the first day of lockdown so i couldn't <laughs> go out partying. just the, just <laughs> cue uh this is a section where we cue little wayne yeah <laughs> yeah yeah the section, i actually yeah. did play that song that <laughs> night after a few dope bells like yeah <laughs> but are you, how, how, how old were you then i was i think i just turned 22 it's four years Hectic. ago yeah Yo, 22, 22, yeah. 22, 22 well. many. Yeah. that was mad because i remember in my diary still stands i want to buy m135 uh, when i'm 25 that was the goal and so i four bought years it that same schedule yeah when uh, so how, how old were you when you bought the first one because this is your second one yeah this is the second one yeah, yeah. so the first one i bought that year 2020 it was in july okay, i bought it then okay. yeah sorry before we go on this one is not standard no, this nah. this is the one you've seen the videos yeah, on. Yeah, like I was just saying, yeah, yeah. Yeah. it doesn't baby. sound standard. <laughs> it yeah. doesn't. It's not. Like, it's, it, it doesn't look standard. I, I didn't even bother the try extending a motor plan or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I just said no, it's fine. I'll just pay for the services and all because I know. Well, what I'm what did you what did you do stock. to the car? So it Everything. has a custom exhaust system. Yeah, yeah. And a downpipe. It has a forge. Uh, blower valve kit it has uh intercooler it how has much more kilowatt does it push now than standard actually not like i didn't go for heavy st the previous uh, one was okay. heavy the kilowatt. heavy yeah. like mm -hmm. power one i did yo, i think like around 80 and 90 thousand rand in just performance modes sure. okay and that's a so lot this one is more fuel, for sound like fuel pumps fuel lines like a lot of okay. things were done this one is more for yeah sound and just reliability because okay. some of the parts that i changed is plastic parts so i, I changed so it to like aluminium better. so okay. it's yeah safer so i have like a light tune on it just to wake it up a little bit but the previous car i couldn't really use the power for the normals like down yeah. roads yeah, so yeah. you can't put it all down so what's the use of it so now so this one is just i feel like the perfect amount but i was gonna say this if, for guys that haven't seen it like this is honestly like the perfect car enthusiast car 
yeah the, the sound the look enjoyable. like it's all the little yeah. the little and details it's, and it's a small car. ish you know car it's a hatchback so it feels yeah. light it mm-hmm. feels nimble but it has a nice amount of power sounds and good. it's real it's real wheel drive yeah it's real yeah, yeah. drive and it's a straight six hatchback i feel like yeah. it's the best hatchback yeah. In the world. <laughs> yeah a lot of people are obsessed with you know audi rs3s yeah. and stuff and to be honest i actually first before the first one i bought i was Looked set on an rs3 it was a red one and later in the day, I the guy from Tiger Valley uh, BMW still phoned me. He's like, "You got still gonna come test drive the the? It was an M140 and an M135." And I was like, oh, "Let's just go, you know. I might as well." And, and after that drive, I was obsessed with the BMW. So, so hold on, if you were to go test drive both of them, what made you go for the M135, not the M140? For me personally, it sounded better. Okay. The okay. 40, when you rev it, it sounds like the m- same tone basically oh, the whole yeah, time yeah. it sounds like a bit weird i know the the 40s the b58 is hella powerful and all that but for for all the for all the audi uh fuck boys <laughs> out there <laughs> uh, this was from somebody that owns two r8 so r is three had multiple audi tt or Sail. What did Sahil say I, in Joburg? So Let, he, he's put his baby literally up now for sale purely because he said it's cheap quality. It's inside. He, it literally that, feels that, plastic. You can Audi. knock on it. Or it's three. Yeah. So this, yeah, is interior, from, yeah. this is from a guy that's owned maybe like eight Audis. And we talked about it and he said, listen here, honestly, the interior feels cheap. Mm. And for the money you pay for that vehicle, it does not feel premium at all. No. It does not feel like this is a premium sports car mm. or like a hot hatch. That, that's, and, and I have to agree, even if you look at the, the BMW, let's say the M340, the newer ones, if you look at the build quality, mm. the feel. Yes. Um, and then even Merck, we've, we've talked about it. Merck, yeah. Merck's interior is, is top. Nice. So we yeah, were literally talking about this because literally last week, I actually went to go look at the, the new A45 AMGs. Uh, um, yeah. And I said to the, the guy I was the, with Justin I was with, and I was like, bro, honestly sitting in here, you can feel what you pay for. Yeah, it's you quality. Can, literally in the, the, the shifters. Your steering wheel, every little knob, every little Everything thing, is you solid can feel and feels, the quality. Yeah. Like that's the thing, like I like... I think that's why I kind of like expensive, people say expensive yeah. clothing. I don't mean like you're talking about Louis Vuitton and stuff. I I mean, just any type of clothing, it's mm. like expensive. Premium. It feels premium, premium. And it's not like you're yeah, after a few washes, this thing just goes to hell. So every time I buy clothes, I'd rather buy two pants and two shirts instead of 10 pants and 10 shirts because I can get yeah. it for cheaper. I like wearing more pr- But it is, stuff. it's like, like quality. I always yeah. say to guys once, uh, it's not always about the name brand but like you said it's mm. literally about the quality, quality of something yeah. then then just to bring it back obviously in new year we spoke to you last year how's the year been going with the trading let's just bring it back to the trading pretty real good quick. i must say i think i took a little bit of a break after my forex funds thing yeah, yeah. i went to genesis and uh, <laughs> then i took a break and i I came back afterwards slightly not really you know, super into it but this year i started off no proper this is this is what i'm going for this year this is the plan this is the goal and so far i'm actually a little bit like not surprised you know obviously yeah, i know yeah. i can trade and all that but i was like surprised how smoothly it felt mm-hmm. i feel like it's more of like a feeling thing you know yeah, yeah. The, the results are mostly this average as, as usual but the feeling i just felt a bit more like free like there's no there's just like less emotion attached to the trades I and know. i must say sorry other than the the freedom side when you took that break were you like taking a complete break or were you still like watching the markets doing things because the reason i'm asking that is have you ever had that stage even as a guy that's been in the game long now i think you and me have spoke about yeah, this yeah. where you take a break for it can be a week it can be four days and i come back to the charts and i'm like what the hell am i looking at yeah <laughs> like i feel like i don't like, know anything yeah, you're yeah. out of touch with the market it yeah. feels like you don't even know what you're looking for <laughs> like it's just you feel so lost in there and you get frustrated and like okay well what am i gonna do i felt like that your a lot of times but usually what i do is, is i just like reading through my the diary because i write down my steps mm-hmm. and where i start and if i have like a bad day i write everything down and then said like for example today i felt like i don't know what i'm looking at but what helped me was i just started the beginning and the basics you know support resistance where do you want to take buys where do you want to take sales 
if you were to go into a buy, what would be the perfect area to you know obviously look at you know mm. for a reversal or whatever it is and then just i kind of work through there and then i take it easy obviously i'm not going to take a trade when i'm feeling like that <laughs> so it just takes some time obviously but it's you know sometimes it feels like you just wake up and you look at the charts and like I'm, am i sure what i'm looking at <laughs> yeah we we haven't really talked about uh prop firms but uh obviously you've you've partnered now with vault funder as well yes. and uh i maybe want to talk a little bit about that as well because it's obviously i want to say the top sa prop firm currently yeah. with with how things are going and what we've got planned for it but uh how has the experience been so far so far really good actually a couple of my students actually started buying some accounts uh, i think there's at least 10 or 12 at the moment and uh, all of them were super happy with it that they actually i think a couple of them bought a few at the moment mm. so yeah. so far like me personally i have uh, my own account obviously but i haven't started trading on it but i've looked around look at the spreads and everything um, from using the website and everything else and obviously you know, support and you know I don't even have an issue at all. There's like no issues. I don't even know where to say like improve on this. But I've you know, besides um, the payment issue thing, but I mean, that's not your issue and everything still works. You pay you know, like online banking. So yeah, it's not yeah. an issue at all. Yeah. So, and uh, actually I explained to one of my students the why, you know, the car declines and he phoned his bank yeah, say, it's no, a it's safety yeah. measure. Yeah. And it, it worked. Later they told me now it worked and now it's perfect. Yeah. So it's not even an issue. Coming coming back to the to the prop firm space, and I think this is maybe a question a lot of us have is what is your outlook on where the prop firm space is gonna be in the next six to twelve months? I must be honest, after last year with the USA prop firms, I was a little bit scared. Or well, not scared, but like a like skeptical. Skeptical. But now after you know vault funder i actually no jokes feel like i'm a bit excited because my goal was to get a you know prop firm account but max it out like get the max mm -hmm. amount like of funding it, it was everything. just like a goal obviously as a trader you want to see money goals you want to yeah, see yeah, yeah. all that you wanna, so you want to i wanted to get that but after you know what happened with over there in the, in the us i was feel like okay well that's not gonna happen maybe i don't think so but now I'm actually quite excited. So, you know, I want to get more accounts, more accounts, build it, get funded. Because, I mean, it's not easy, obviously. Mm. I think in my whole career, I did around 20, 25 challenges. And I think I only passed around like eight of them. So... Oh, it's, it's, it's not... It's, yeah. it's a mental game. It we is, spoke, We spoke about it. It's that thing of... All of a sudden, obviously now it's easier without the the time limits. Yeah, but yeah, when, yeah. when uh, Curl, Curly's sitting here, we're gonna we're gonna have him on as well. But the back in the you day, when you, day. dude, and and the thing is, you would maybe be up nine percent. Thirty days, you start from scratch, yeah, and mentally said, that killed you. Yeah, <laughs> no, like, you dude, no I idea was so close. What happened to me once? It was a hundred thousand uh, dollar FTMO account. And back then, I actually didn't know that if you finish the account in profit, you get a free retry. I didn't ah, know that. Ah, and you went so full I, margin every at time the end. Go, that's why I failed so many. <laughs> um, so I was literally $45 away from passing phase two. And you failed it. <laughs> and I flipped and failed it. Honestly, I made a like a just go, went back and I was like, okay, well, I have nothing to lose. There's one day left, boom, yeah. and I lost it. Uh, I was like, I can't believe it. It's a hundred thousand dollar account, forty five dollars away. You couldn't get it. Listen, yeah. Here, so, so what happened with me back in the day? I didn't know about the equity and balance drawdown rule. So, I was up like nine percent, and mentally, I thought like, okay, I first need to lose nine percent, then I'm back at the initial capital, and then I still have five percent on the mm. day to lose. Oh, and okay. I went big on the trade, and I failed. And I'm and I email FTMO back then, and I'm like, dude, how did I fail? I'm still net positive, like almost four uh, percent. Yeah. And he explains like, no, even though you up nine percent, you can't lose more than five. And I was like, dude. Right. Yo. So we talk about that. You could ask Yo. Chris. So that I think is Mo, Mo was also in the office still this day, and. It's literally the end of last year and I literally, I still said to him, this was going to be like break my record for my best trade ever. 
and I'm two percent down in the account. So I'm not two percent. I'm eight percent. So I've only got two percent. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I think two, you were nine, dude. Nine percent. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. He still uh, did something like sixteen or seventeen eight, percent. Eighteen percent. Yeah. Okay. Eighteen percent in one trade. What? So I'm up. I'm like there. I'm gonna flip and get this thing. Yeah. So obviously the day closes. I'm like I'm leaving it. Like this thing just needs to literally get me Ooh. like another percent or two. There's not the next day pull back. Pull back. I'm sitting there. I'm like, bro. Like Rich. end of the day, I'm still sixteen percent up. I'm fifteen percent up. Fourteen percent up. This thing hits twelve percent up. Accounts trades close. Like they're closing profits, and I'm like. What the hell's going on here? What? I get breached. I'm like, well, how did I get breached in profits? Like, what is going on here? And they come back and they said, yeah, but equity, you you came back down 5%. Yeah. You blew uh, the account. Oh. Yeah, I'm so like, it's not a swing oh, account. I my word. It's not a I swing account. That I actually yeah. still didn't know. Now <laughs> yeah. I know. Okay, well, so it, so it resets, it resets uh, um, every evening. Um Garen, we we unfortunately running on a tight schedule here in Cape Town. I think Keeks, uh, we're gonna do say the last round of questions, um, and then we're gonna call it. But uh, Garen, yeah, one thing, uh, just uh, any advice there for for new traders? I, I feel like there's there's so many new traders coming into the game, um, even though you've got some seasoned veterans, guys that have been trading three four years. It's almost like this new surge of of fresh traders coming in. So any advice for them and for any one of the viewers that that's watching that's that's still struggling to get to that stage of profitability or to get to that stage where they feel comfortable with their trading i would personally say that there's so many strategies and so many things out there at the moment and the thing is like you can't say this is wrong this is right i mean my opinion everything can be right if you you know figure it out so i would say find something that works for you you like every person has their own personality you know i prefer this type of trading or they prefer that you know find that and build your strategy your own one find something that works find something Mm. that you can add on top of it if things aren't going well you know even if you have a 70 percent win rate that means that 30 percent is guaranteed losses so there will be losses but find something build the strategy you know according to what you like because if you do something every day that you like and enjoy you know you can easily you can easily you know, take it to the next level. So I would say do that and then don't put a time limit on certain things. Don't tell yourself, I want to be a millionaire in a year's time or I want to make 100,000 rand in six months' time. You know, Tell yourself, I want to make a million and I'm, you know, I'm going to try my best every single day to get a step closer to that. Don't mm. ever put a time limit yeah. on because that can mentally drain you and put you under you know, stress and pressure and everything like that. So... I think that's basically yeah, I think that, that, that couldn't be said any better. Yeah. I think end of the day, we always talk about with trading. Um, I think I even spoke about one of my episodes where I said, yeah, the thing I love about trading is we can all start on that eight line race, but we're all going to finish at that same finish line. Yeah. So yeah. no matter what route you take, you're still all going to get to that same end goal. Exactly. It's just about how you want to get there. Yeah. Kiggs, any closing questions for Garen? Um, on that note, I think it's also one thing we didn't touch on, and I actually don't even know the answer. Um, hmm. Are you more basic in trading, or do you go more the SMC, RCT Ooh, route? Okay, okay. Super, super basic. Hey, so okay. it stands and out I must, again, I must guys. be honest, I used to be on that side, and uh, things were just so inconsistent, yeah. actually, for me. Like, yeah. then I'm going doing really well, then I'm doing really bad. It's very subjective. Yes. So it's a very subjective way. And I actually just literally went back to stage basics. one basics. Yeah. And with obviously the knowledge of market structure now, man, that's it. I just look at it and then trade it market structure. It's yeah. simple. Guys, uh, Garen Hull, uh, I really want to thank you, Garen, for coming out here today. Um, and yeah, we, we basically came... We drove further than you, so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, but Chad, yeah, Garen all in the house uh, and what an awesome episode. Please go and check in our special guest list on our YouTube channel. Go and watch the previous episode with Garen as well. And Garen, where can the guys find you? Uh, Instagram only. Instagram. What yeah. is your Instagram handle? It's Garen underscore... Ooh. 
Garen underscore who guys check Garen out we'll also have his uh, details in the description of this video and I think this is also where Mo will put it yeah yeah by my finger somewhere there there, <laughs> click there. Um, but anyways guys great episode Keeks thanks so much Garen no, thanks so much appreciate Thank you having me much. brother and and thank you will, for having me I appreciate it and we will see you guys on the next episode peace and love cheers cheers guys cheers